It may be late in the season, but there's still plenty to get started. It can be tempting just to rest on your laurels and then enjoy the harvests, but sowings made now will set you up for later in the autumn, through winter and on into spring. And what are these late sowing crops? Well, let's find out. And what better place to start than with a tempting array of Asian greens? Mizuna, Mabuna, Komatsuna and mustards. Don't worry if you haven't heard of them, they are all very simple to grow. And they will offer a pleasing range of spicy tones and lovely textures that are sure to bring winter salads and stir fries to rousing life. The great thing about these leafy lovelies is that they don't mind being sown at this slightly cooler time of the year. And they will grow away quickly to give a harvest in a few months time and then again in early spring once the worst of the winter cold is over. I am in the equivalent of US hardiness zone 8. So while our winters are relatively mild, we do get some good frosts. So these leaves will benefit from a little bit of protection. Our Asian greens are all grown in much the same way and I'm going to start them off in the same sieved all-purpose potting mix and I've just made little depressions ready to sow those seeds. Let's start with Mizuna. Just look at those beautiful intricately cut leaves. What beauties! If you've never tried Mizuna before it's so worth growing. Not only does it look stunning, the leaves have a delightfully delicate spice to them. A little bit like arugula or rocket. I'm going to be sowing just a scant pinch of seeds into each plug. That means about four seeds very roughly. Now these are all going to be sewn into this plug so I'll cover them all over once I've finished sewing the others. And because I'm going to be sewing four different types of leaves into this one tray it's going to be super important to label as I go. Next up is the Mabuna, a very close relative of Mizuna producing long almost spoon shaped leaves with a mild mustard taste. And again it's just four seeds into each plug. Komatsuna, also called mustard spinach, produces loose clusters of leaves that look a little bit like bok choy or pak choy to my eye, just a bit smaller. The leaves have a mild flavour, maturing to a more peppery tang as the leaves get older. Again, it's four seeds to each plug. Then finally, it's my go-to winter favourite, mustard. Mustards come in an astounding range of leaf shapes and colours. So many different varieties to explore. I'm going for a standard kind of red-leaved rounded variety which I think will give a pleasing contrast to some of the spikier textures of the, the other leaves there. And with that all labelled, the last thing to do is simply to cover up all our seeds with just a little bit of potting mix to cover them over nice and snug. The plan is to grow these on in their plug trays for about the next month or so. And at which point I will have two choices. By that time the tomatoes and cucumbers behind me here should be done. So I can plant some of them directly into the greenhouse beds. And as we'll be going into the autumn and the daylight will be getting a little bit rarer, I will make sure to give them plenty of space so they get more light. And that means I'll be spacing them fairly generous 9 inches or 22 centimetres apart. The rest will go into old mushroom trays like this one. I'll just line the tray with newspaper to stop the potting mix falling out, fill with my potting mix and then plant just six plugs into each tray. I did this last winter with great success and the advantage of growing them in trays like this is that I can keep them up on the greenhouse staging where they'll get a bit more light and it makes them easier to harvest too. I've done a video on growing them this way and I will pop a link to it down below. Growth will slow right down once it does get colder but in a protected environment like this there's every chance I may get a few harvests even in the depths of winter before growth resumes a pace in spring. When it does get colder I will need to drop the watering right down to perhaps once every two weeks or so to avoid the kind of soggy conditions that attract disease. Then when the leaves reach a usable size I'll just harvest them individually as well as picking off any yellow or diseased leaves. Now in a cooler climate like mine a protected environment like a greenhouse is really helpful or you could use a hoop house or some sort of sturdy cold frame. But our next batch of sowings are all 
perfectly capable of growing out in the open, though you will perhaps get a more reliable harvest if you can offer them a little bit of protection like, say, a miniature hoop house. I've chosen three of the very hardiest winter salads, all capable of withstanding winter's biting chill. I'm sowing into this recently cleared bed that gets its fair share of direct sunshine. And to prepare the bed for sowing, I'm just going in with a little bit of a sprinkling of an organic fertilizer, and this is just blood, fish, and bone. And now it's simply a question of raking it all in, nice and level, to leave a lovely fine tilth to sow into. The first of our tempting trio is mash, and you might know it as corn salad or lamb's lettuce. It produces these soft and tender leaves, but don't be fooled by that. It's remarkably hardy, and with an almost creamy texture and light nutty taste, this is the perfect choice to counterbalance some of the spicier tones of those Asian greens. Mash is easy to sow into rows, so I'm just going to make two shallow rows here, about eight inches, that's 20 centimetres apart. And to sow, just take a small pinch of seeds and sow them nice and thinly along the row before pinching over to cover them over uh, just about a quarter of an inch or half a centimetre deep. Now once these are up, I will thin the seedlings out to leave one about every two inches or five centimetres or so. It's worth just marking the ends of the rows with a stick or something, just so you know where the seedlings are. And another little tip actually, is to mark up a rake or some other implement with your spacings, so you can just lay it down and use that as a, as a measuring rule to help with, with spacing. Next we have land cress, or you might know it as American cress. This looks a lot like watercress and tastes similar too, making it an excellent hardy alternative. So these are going about 12 inches or 30 centimetres apart from the last row that we made. And again, it's just a simple matter of sewing them nice and thinly. And then once these guys are up, they will be thinned out to leave one plant every four to six inches. That's uh, 10 to 15 centimetres. And then lastly, we're going to be sewing Claytonia, also known as winter purslane or miner's lettuce. I don't know why these winter salads have uh, so many alternative names. This absolute beauty produces soft, almost waxy, heart-shaped leaves. How lovely. And when the tiny, ever so delicate white flowers appear in spring, you can eat those too. It loves the cool, damp conditions of autumn, and if you let it, will naturally self-seed, giving you an almost perennial patch of this very accommodating winter salad. And the Claytonia goes in rows about 20 centimetres or eight inches apart. And then once the seedlings come up, these guys will be thin to around three inches or seven centimetres apart. Now with all of these winter salads, it's important to keep them weed free because they'll need as much airflow and light as possible. And it will also mean there's fewer opportunities for slugs to get their rasping teeth into them. They'll uh, give some good harvests in a couple of months or so, and then they'll slow down over winter and then pick up again from early spring. But as I said, if you can offer them a bit of cover, then they will crop for longer. Something like a miniature hoop house or a cold frame. And they're really, really easy to set up and so effective. And I've done a video on that, which I will link to in the video description below. There's still time to harvest a few tasty roots to harvest this side of winter. And I've got two fast growers that should do really well as summer's heat starts to wane. Some fast growing radish and some baby turnips. For radishes, I'm going with this white tipped radish here, which is called French breakfast. And if the French really do have radishes for breakfast, well, good for them, because I can't think of a better way to waken up the palate than with this lovely, spicy, hearty root. I'm running a bit short of space, if I'm honest with you. So I've prepared a pot here, a potting mix, and I'm just sowing into them here. That's always useful if you are running short of space. And the seeds here are really quite chunky, so they're easy to space individually, a couple of inches or five centimeters or so apart, so that you've got enough room for each plant. If I was sowing them in the ground, I'd drop a seed every uh, inch or so, a couple of centimetres, and then they wouldn't really need thinning. These are really quick growers, as I said. They should be ready to give some tasty roots within about six weeks. 
At this time of year, actually, it's a good time to sow uh, these kind of brassicas like radish because there are fewer flea beetles around which can sometimes really spoil your crop. They're thin on the ground now, so these guys have got a good chance of growing unscathed. So I'm sowing them there about just under half an inch or a centimetre deep and then I'll just cover them with a bit more of the potting mix. This time of year the potting mix or soil is so warm that things just get off to such a quick start so we won't be waiting long for these to pop up. I expect them to be with us probably within three or four days. And now for my turnips and I'm going to be growing these as I said for baby roots so they won't be that much bigger than the radishes probably up to about golf ball size and I'm just going to sow them in rows and this time I'll be thinning them to about three inches or seven centimeters apart to allow those roots to swell a bit bigger. Any seedlings that I do have to thin out won't be wasted I'll just add those to a salad. In fact the turnip leaves also known as just turnip tops are great eating in their own way a lovely bonus green and as I think I've said many times before, we all need more greens in our lives. I haven't watered anything outside by the way because it's been so darn wet here recently and it's going to be raining later on. But obviously if it is dry, do be sure to give everything a thorough water. Now there's also time just about to sow a crop of beets or beetroot if you're growing them under the cover of a greenhouse or hoop house or if you're growing in a warmer climate and we'll be looking at how to sow and grow beets in an upcoming video so do make sure you tune in for that. We're pushing it perhaps just a little bit with this next one but if you get on and sow spring cabbages early in the month there should be enough time for them to grow on and plant out in a few weeks ready for some of the very earliest spring greens of the season and that's perfect for filling what gardeners call the hungry gap when pickings are pretty thin on the ground. Again, I'm sowing these into plug trays of our sieved all-purpose compost. But this time I'm just sowing two seeds per plug. And then what I'll do is when the seedlings come up, I will thin them to leave just the strongest in each plug. And then perhaps three weeks on from that point, they should be big enough to go outside. I'll space them about 10 inches or 25 centimetres apart in both directions for plenty of leaves or I could plant them a little bit further than that for nicely formed dense hearts. Now initially they won't need any protection but when we get towards mid-autumn those pesky pigeons will be showing an interest so I will need to cover them up with perhaps uh, some netting just to keep them from decimating our hard-won cabbages. If you'd like to know more about keeping pests off your cabbages and other brassicas for that matter, then do mosey on over to this video. In the meantime, happy sowing and growing, and I will catch you next time.